Is Gay okay? Is there any? We can start. All right. Let's see. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let's convene our meeting. Uh, first of all, I would ask Director Wood to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this open session meeting, I'm sorry, is videotaped for Cablecast on Metro Cable 14, replay on Saturday, July 16th, 2016 at 4 p.m., and Monday, July 18th, 2016 at 12 noon on Channel 14. Webcast at dub.sacmetrocable.tv. The open session meetings are also available for viewing on the district website at dub.metrofire.ca.gov. Board Clerk, are there any speakers? There are no speakers this evening. All right. Any questions about the consent agenda? Mr. Chair, Chair I make a motion that we adopt consent. I'll second. second Moved and seconded. Thank you. Could we have the vote? Director Mitchell. Aye. Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Wood. Aye. Barnes. Aye. Jones. Aye. Ann Scheidegger. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Let's move to the action items. Board Clerk, would you please lead us through this? Good evening, Directors. Before you this evening, you have the option to elect a representative to the California Special District Association Board of Directors for seat B. Each candidate is either a board member or management level employee of a member district located in the agency's geographic region. The options tonight are Ginger Root, the incumbent, from Lincoln Rural County Fire Protection District, Gil Albiani from Kasunas Community Services District, and Paul Green from Rio Linda Alberta Community Water District. The governing board of Metro Fire can cast their ballot for one candidate by voting at an official public meeting. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Board members, any questions or nominations, thoughts? Thoughts are we go with a fire protection district nominee since they would have an appreciation for the business that we need represented on the board. And that, is there a specific nomination out of that? Sure, why not? Let's nominate or I, I make a motion we nominate Ginger Root from Lincoln Rural County Fire Protection District. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? It appears that she's been there, or this individual's been there for quite a long time, since 1976. And she's a manage in a management position, right? Wow. She is. Okay. She's a longstanding board member there. Um, she's served as a board member for CSDA for eight years and is currently the CSDA Fiscal Committee and Audit Committee. And she's been with the Lincoln Rural County Fire Protection District since 1976. Thank you for that. Been moved and seconded. Ease. We'll call for the vote. Director Mitchell. Aye. Gould. Aye. Orzali. Aye. Wood. Aye. Barnes? Aye. Jones? Aye. Ann Scheidegger? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. We'll move to reports. President's report, nothing to report. Chief Wells. Well, good evening, directors. Uh, Mark Wells, Fire Chief. Uh, I'll keep my comments somewhat brief tonight. I uh, wanted to uh, express thanks to all the crews and uh, Director Scheidegger for attending the town hall meeting we had on the 30th of um, June. It's a good opportunity for us to have a broadcast that goes out to all of our personnel and have interactive dialogue. So that was uh, well received, at least from our perspective. Uh, I'd like to also congratulate the 16-1 Fire Academy graduates. Um, 
there was 15 recruits, and that was last Friday night on the, uh, it was the 8th. So, th and also thank you very much for the academy cadre and the training division and everybody that puts our fire academies together. It's a tremendous uh, effort and a good opportunity. I'd also like to uh, announce that I was at the Interagency Recognition Day yesterday at Camp Smokey. It's a uh, combined uh, fire prevention um, education seminar between local, state, federal, and tribal partners. The Sacramento County Fire Chiefs Association actually sponsors also a, a structure there within the community of education, and that's been a long go ongoing, long, long-standing fire prevention education program. So if you're at the state fair, please make your way over to see um, Camp Smoky. Also, I'd like to say a special thank you to all the camp counselors and all the young, um, young um, kids that are out there at the fire camp this week. Brenda Briggs is again doing a tremendous uh, lift and education of these um, phenomenal young people. Uh, we have a lot of our own fire personnel out there volunteering their time to be camp, camp counselors. And I'd like to specifically recognize retirees, um, Jay Darnell and Jim Newcomer, who are also out there that I saw. And if there was anyone that I missed that was out there, it was a retiree. And a lot of our actives are out there as well. Um, great program, as, and Brenda does a fantastic job with that all year long. Upcoming meetings, um, we have a open house scheduled at Station 106. We're excited to have our engine company um, back into that community full time. There is a, a flyer out that's in the packets and that will be at 10 a.m. to noon. And that is at Station 106 over on Butano by the Country Club Mall. Also, I'd like for everyone to save the date. On the 27th of July, we have the single role paramedic 16-2 Academy graduation. That'll be at the Citrus Heights Community Center at 6 p.m. We have new hires. I'd like to uh, announce uh, Nehemiah O'Neill is a new Fire Inspector 1 in the Fire Prevention or Community Risk Reduction Division, and also Office Technician Cora Zielinski, who's also in the Community Risk Reduction. Retirements, we had 29 years of service. Engineer Dave Johnson, longtime uh, good engineer, and uh, we're gonna miss him. He retired as of the 1st of July. And then, of course, um, with that, we have promotions. Um, on the 24th of June, we had Captain Jeremy Dabb. And then on the 1st of July, we had Captain Matt Stewart. We had Captain Jeremy Horde, Captain Scott Lohmeyer. And then we had a um, promotion in the community risk reduction and supervising inspector Michael Hambrick. And then human resources analyst Alicia Melnichuk is now, or she was a specialist, she's now an analyst. And now we have financial analyst Tara Mailer. And then a plan intake specialist Shana Mamulski, and she does the plan intake down at the county. Um, so that's a good opportunity for everybody moving up in the organization, nice to see. Then we have a recruitment for firefighter paramedic. Our final filing date is July 29th by 4 p.m. And also the single role EMT and the single role paramedic. Final filing date is the 22nd of July, also at 4 p.m. So without any questions, that concludes my report. Questions? Thank you, Chief. Operations report, Chief Bridge. Good evening, President Scheidegger, board members, Eric Bridge, Deputy Chief Operations. Uh, reporting out some familiar numbers for all of you. Since our last uh, report on June 23rd, we've had a total of close to 6,000 calls, of which we had 38 structure fires. On the EMS side, uh, we had uh, th over 3,000 dispatches, just over that, with a transport ratio of 72.5%. Uh, and our good partners at EMR had 147. Um, had 100, excuse me, 159 dispatches with 147 transports. So uh, the, the other thing I wanted to mention too, that I guess may have heard a little media buzz going on over at Mather today with a type of a, came in as a structure fire initially, but just uh, to kind of set some of that record straight, they were had some, they were building a, a shade structure for a lot of the aircraft out there. And apparently they had a mishap while that happened. Or, all the bolts failed at the same time and the beams came down in a that A-shaped frame and uh, unfortunately a couple of the workers were had some minor injuries. Fortunately they were minor but um, so that was the extent of that. It wasn't a structure fire uh, but anyway so there'll be lots of investigation going on a couple streets over. So just thought I'd share that with you. I don't have anything else to report for you tonight so unless you have any questions that's all I have. Questions? 
Chief Bridge, thank you. Sure. Council Lavra. Uh, no report. All right. Uh, is there anyone here from 522? All right. Committee and delegate reports. The executive committee has not met. Nothing to report. Communication Center, JPA, Chief Bridge. Yeah, we met uh, June 28th, um, and there was no action taken. Uh, next uh, board meeting will be June, uh, excuse me, July 26th, right here at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much, Chief. California Fire and Rescue Training, JPA, Director Kelly is absent, so I think we'll pass on that. Finance Committee, Director Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Finance and Audit Committee will meet next on July 28th at 5 o'clock in this room. Look forward to that. Thank you. Policy Committee, Director Gould. Uh, the Policy Committee meeting for this evening was summarily canceled, for, I think, for a lack of policies to be reviewed. And the next meeting will be on Thursday, August 25th at 5 o'clock in these chambers. Thank you very much, Director. All right. Board member questions. Director Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Comments, uh, questions, sorry. <clears throat> two items. One is uh, I did attend the Tropical Affair at the end of uh, June, a great, terrific fundraiser for the Byrne Institute at, uh, on the grounds of Shriners Hospital, next, next door to the hospital. Well attended, a very classy uh, production, and I appreciate all the efforts of all the volunteers, all the sponsors, and uh, all my uh, fellow directors who attended. It was uh, a very good, very positive, constructive, uh, huge cross-section of the community comes together to help support the Institute. So thank you very much on that. The second one is I need to do a plug. This Saturday is the 43rd annual Epi's Great Race. There is still time to sign up for individuals or teams. It's uh, too late for the online registration, but anyone who's interested at all or with a team, you can check with me tomorrow at the information booth at uh, Riverbend Park from 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. I'll be ready to sign you up and get you squared away. So thank you very much, and thank you to Metro Fire for helping to support the race uh, all these many years. Thank you, Director. <laughs> Director Rosali, are you going to the uh, Effie's race? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I will be there. I'm in the interpretive kayak competition. Interpretive, very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Do you, do, you, do you have any comments other than that? No, I have no further comments. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Director Gould. You can't, you just, that. you can't even imagine how bad I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. No comments. Director Mitchell. Thank you, Board Chair. Uh, I would just like this evening to announce that the, uh, most of you know, uh, we're restoring Real Linda's second ever engine in the community of Real Linda. And once a year we have a fundraising dinner. And this year that fundraising dinner is October the 1st. That's the first Saturday in October at the Park District office, at six o'clock. Uh, and I think something that will make all of you just scramble for tickets because this evening, uh, in speaking to a, a very fine gentleman uh, about if he would be willing to speak uh, there, and he, he committed to doing that in case, but with one exception, in case there was a previous uh, engagement that he did not know about. But this is a world-class speaker, someone who has spoken before on our behalf and is supporting this. Uh, like I say, he's, he's known throughout the country, and he's... He's really uh, been so popular that he's been requested to speak many times. So I'm proud to announce this evening uh, with the one caveat that in the case in his schedule that he did not know that uh, Chief Mark Wells will be there that evening and be speaking and certainly not knowing where we will be that evening in the process of our, our new chief. Uh, but if that is known and that person is available, um, I spoke with Chief Wells, and if that person's available, he would uh, so ask that person to be there and to uh, be introduced to the community. So 
I would ask all of you to, to come, enjoy yourself. Uh, it's a $20 donation. It's going to be a barbecue dinner. All you can eat, ribs, chicken, beans, salad. So, uh, and I would uh, tell you that one of our directors on this dais, his charming wife grew up in Rio Linda and went to Rio Linda High School. So uh, we uh, thank you for that also, Director Woods. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, cost you. yeah, yeah. Br br bring, bring your money and uh, have lots of fun and support the restoration of, of that uh, 1927 American La France. I would also say uh, congratulations to all the retirees, to the new hirees. Uh, the new hirees have large boots to fill because there's just hundreds of out hours and years of experience that are leaving the district. So uh, be careful when you fill those boots and have a good career. So thank you. Thank you, Director. Director Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple. Tanned. Thank you very much. Straight from Hawaii. <laughs> um, two things. On Sunday, Branch Marietta out in Slough House had an 87-acre grass fire and uh, I was coming home with my daughter and we got to see the fascinating work by all the crews from the Dozer program, came out in 58, uh, 59 was there, I think Wilton came out, and uh, the quick action with the water drops, I mean, you got to see, it was like a symphony, watching everybody work together, keeping people back and safe. Uh, so I think the crews that responded that day, the quick action, I definitely saved some of the homes that are on the hill, so we appreciate that. Second thing for me, near and dear to me, is the Dallas incident and the officers that lost their life. I wanted to read something that I think people forget about the fire personnel that responded to render aid to those officers that were, that were that perished, but also the ones that were uh, fighting for their lives. Specific, uh, someone I know from the Dallas had shared this Dallas PD. It said, fire did not get enough credit. They were moving with us in ambulances toward Market Street, towards the gunfire. Every single time we told them to get out of the shooting zone, the driver would just keep yelling, just tell us where they are, referring to our personnel. I have personally been in situations where there's been an active shooter and it's been dangerous, but at the same time, fire personnel, without due regard for their own safety, follow us in there. Um, so we appreciate the response that they did. Sorry that that happened. It's chaos right now in some cities, but I will tell you right now, when public safety, when that call comes, it's great to see both agencies work together for the same reason. So for that, I think everybody in this agency does the same thing on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Director Barnes, for those, those comments on public safety. Yeah. All right, Director Wood. I, I can't follow that up. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Well, I have uh, just a couple of quick comments. Uh, one, I did attend the town hall, and uh, I want to commend the chief and the executive staff for their leadership and putting this on. It was uh, standing room only in here, uh, and there were, I don't know how many people connected, uh, but obviously a good number, judging from the comments. Uh, it was an excellent give and take, and I think an excellent opportunity for our personnel to be connected and, and to get good feedback. Uh, there was nothing off limits, and, and I thought it was uh, very well done. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, secondly, uh, or last, I, um, I want to relate a personal experience. Um, you know, those of us up here talk about the, the brave, fine service provided by the men and women of uh, Metro every day. I had a little bit of a personal experience. Uh, on July 3rd, my son-in-law, uh, forgetting who he was, was up on the second floor uh, putting on sunscreens of his Carmichael home and uh, went to descend, took a step, and fell off the roof, 10 feet uh, on concrete, flat on his back, uh, completely destroyed his uh, L1. But the point of it, uh, he, he's going to be okay. Uh, the point of this story is Metro. Um, a neighbor lady happened to be walking by, ran in, rang the doorbell. Uh, my daughter and my grandsons responded out there, and my daughter immediately called 911. And her comments um, when I talked to her, aside from being distraught about her husband, were how fantastic uh, the responding team was. So Engine 110, Medic 103, I don't have your names, um, but you are my heroes, and uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, I know my, my grandsons uh, immediately grabbed the blanket because it was a, a really hot day and they were holding a blanket over dad and they were crying when they were telling me about the, the brave response and, and how happy they were to see that engine and, and that medic arrive. So personal experience, uh, you people are out there doing it every day and I, it's just a routine thing for you, but for me personally, thank you. All right, with that, uh, let's adjourn to closed session.
Oh, yes, all of you. Thank you, Grant. Thank you for coming. Have a good evening.
We will reconvene. Council Lover, will you please report out? Uh, yes, thank you, President Scheidegger. Uh, the board met in closed session um, pursuant to the agenda items listed in tonight's uh, closed session agenda. With respect to agenda item number one, uh, A, the court uh, met in closed session with respect to the workers' compensation claim of Michael uh, Deutsch and by a seven to zero vote um, uh, gave approval to its third party uh, workers' compensation um, carrier to effectuate a settlement of that claim. 1B, the uh, board met in closed session with respect to the workers' compensation claim of employee David Sinclair and by a seven to zero vote uh, gave authority to its third party administrator to effectuate a settlement of that workers' compensation claim. With respect to 1C, the board met in closed session to consider the a workers' compensation claim of Robert Weber, and by a seven to zero vote, uh, gave authority to its third party administrator to effectuate a settlement of that claim. With respect to item number two, the board met in closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9 AD2, a conference with legal counsel regarding exposure to litigation. No action was taken. Finally, the board met in closed session under government code section 549. Five seven with respect to the fire chief selection process, no action was taken. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lavra. There being no further business before this body, we will adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.